In this video we're going to be doing a little more confirmation testing. Um, it is necessary. Questions have been raised by some very talented people on the forum um, in regards to what area of the loop is actually being inducted and as to how we should measure the voltage across the uh, loop that passes through the middle of the toroid. It's been said that it should be measured just around the back side of the toroid from point to point. So that is what we're going to do in this test and we'll see what happens when we do that. Inside the toroid I have a large 3 watt 0.6 ohm resistor. So it's actually the resistor sitting in the middle of the toroid now and not our loops. Um, and we have our 100 ohm resistor and our 1k ohm resistor. So I have to pan out a bit there. So 100 ohms, 1k ohms, that's before. So what we're going to do now is use the method suggested, measure the voltage across that resistor, which is 0.6 ohms, and we're going to see what we get. Using Ohm's law, that voltage across that resistance should give us the current flowing through the circuit, apparently. I'll put it nice and close to the resistor. There we go, it's as close as I can get it. Okay, so we're going to look at the voltage across our 0.6 ohm resistor apparently and we will have to drop that down and I've been fiddling with the um, frequency a little bit um, changing it to get maximum voltage throughout the circuit uh, well it may be a little different but here we have 88.1 millivolts across a 0.6 ohm resistor, apparently. So, we go to our uh, good old ohms calculator here, and we put in, oh, hang on, let's have a reset, and we'll set it to uh, milliamps. Done. So we have 0.6 ohms. Our voltage across it is millivolts as well, which is 80, so 86, 88, 88 millivolts. Calculate, and apparently we have 146 milliamps flowing through that circuit. Apparently, I'm pretty sure you all know that that's not going to be right. Um, so if we do this again, I'm just using um, online calculator here, so we don't make any mistakes. Change that to milliamps. So if we put 1k resistance in with 146 milliamps flowing through it, we should have, of course, 146 volts across that 1k ohm resistor. Let's move our scope probe across the 1k ohm resistor and I'm pretty sure you know what's going to happen here, what the results will be and see what we have. Do we have our 146 volts in a single loop transformer? Oddly enough, we have 79, 80 millivolts. Hmm. Emission um, over 145 volts somewhere. So we'll now check our 100 ohm resistor. And what do you think is going to be on that? I'm guessing it's going to add up to be exactly that of the voltage. 
0.6 ohm resistor. Oh, which way am I going here? Wrong way. Oh, we want 10. Oh, bad scope probe. Okay, so we have 7.98 millivolts. So once again, we see impossibly that R2, the voltage across R2 plus the voltage across R1 is exactly the same as the voltage across our 0.6 ohm resistor that's inside the middle of the toroid where the induction is supposed to take place. Um, so we obviously know that that is incorrect and Ohm's law tells us it's incorrect. Things do not add up as they should. So we cannot measure the voltage <coughs> across any kind of conductor passing through the centre of the toroid by looping around the toroid. <coughs> now if I worked out the resistance or the impedance and resistance of the scope itself across our two measuring points of our probe. We put that value resistor here and looped it through our toroid. What do you think the voltage would be across that resistor? It would be exactly what we see by placing the scope across this 0.6 ohm resistor and um, that then tells us that we are indeed measuring um, the voltage across the scope's internal resistance when we place our scope across a 0.6 ohm resistor. Which gives us our 88 millivolts. Which just so happens to be the exact same amount as the voltage across the other two resistors added up. And it always does, it doesn't matter what value resistor we put in there, as we've seen before, it will always equal the voltage of the other two resistors, because as I stated, that is the maximum voltage obtainable from a single loop, regardless of resistance, in this setup here, with the amount of power being supplied to our toroid coil, or our toroid transformer, primary and the turn ratio. So obviously we cannot measure the voltage across any form of resistance by looping around the back of our uh, toroid with our scope or with a multimeter or any other thing that has a conductive path because we're going to always read maximum value this circuit can put out which is 88 millivolts. Okay on with the next bit. Okay so what you're looking at there um, is a coiled up piece of this uh, soft iron garden wire which of course is galvanized coated. Um, magnet like so you can see it is definitely <coughs> soft iron wire. So we cut a length and <coughs> wrapped it very tightly around a small screwdriver. Um, I then sanded the gel off one side and soldered all the way along so each turn is now a shorter turn. This is acting as a Faraday cage around our section of enamelled copper wire which I used a piece of this thick stuff here and um, thus eliminating induction only via the uh, passage through the centre of the toroid which is how some think the induction in this loop takes place and I say does not. So <clears throat> now that we have a Faraday cage um, passing a fair distance out each side of our toroid core 
um, that will eliminate any induction taking place just on the short piece of our uh, loop that passes through the toroid itself which means that the induction must also be taking place on the rest of the loop. I have our scope across our 1k ohm we should have around our uh, 80 millivolts still and if we look at the scope there you can see we indeed, indeed do have that um, if I now take my scope probe and put it across our 100 ohm resistor we should have our other 7 or 8 odd millivolts um, I'll turn the scope back to the 10 millivolts per division and you will see we do have exactly that so it's 80 millivolts plus 8 millivolts once again oddly enough it equaled the 80 millivolts across the 0.6 ohm resistor we had in there in the last test and even though that is insulated if we take our scope now and we price it across the loop if we can reach it bit of wrong, long stretch now what do you think the voltage is going to be? <coughs> let's have a look So oddly enough the voltage across that um, piece of wire travelling through the uh, toroid still has 87, 88 millivolts across it um, even though now it is in its own little Faraday cage which would um, foil any sort of induction taking place just on the bit of wire passing through that loop so I think in the last uh, few tests we've done we can eliminate any thought that induction only takes place through that loop because in this test that is now shielded by a Faraday cage as such which are all shorted turns um, and previously in this video we had our 0.6 ohm resistor through there instead of the inductor itself um, not only did it not add up with the voltages across the other resistors as far as the voltage across our 0.6 ohm resistor goes and the current that should have been flowing through the circuit with those results um, we also got the uh, same voltage across that um, resistor as we did with the total voltage across the other two which are far greater um, values so the tests have eliminated two things <coughs> one induction doesn't only take place on the small piece of wire um, travelling through our toroid core um, it is induced by the electric field through the whole circuit and there only has to be one piece of that circuit a short piece of that circuit in that electric field to obtain the same voltages throughout the circuit oddly enough that's how it is um, we've also eliminated the fact that you can't simply do that because you're now introducing a second circuit which you're measuring the voltage across and not the circuit we are looking at so I hope that clears that up um, if anyone can see any mistakes I've made of course please feel free to tell me and uh, we will correct those mistakes thanks for watching